Donald Trump is not equipped to serve in the role that he is in. In fact, I would say that he's unfit to serve as the president of the United States. We have a lot to lose. And in fact, we're losing right now because Donald Trump is disingenuous about his engagement and his outreach. And in fact, I believe he wants to start a race war in this country. That's Omarosa Manigault Newman. Omarosa, her book is out on Hinge. It all started with our good buddy Chuck Todd on Meet the Press a couple of weeks ago. She continues to pop up and get a lot of, a lot a pub for the book, and she'll be joining us right here on the Bernie and Sid in the Morning Show in about three minutes. You're not going to want to miss that Omarosa with Bernie and Sid coming your way in about three minutes. But before she comes on, man, you're very funny there, uh, Jill. Okay. Uh, let's go to Tony in Staten Island. He's on line five. Good morning, Tony. How are you, pal? Hey, guys. Love your show. i got to compliment you on that Jerry uh, Gary Busey uh, interview. It's probably one of the best I've heard in years. Why is that? Why, why, why do you say that? What do you like about him? Well, you know, the guy, you know, everybody knows he, you know, he was like a half a wheel whack job. And right. yet he's still deep enough that he's in touch with his own spirituality. And, and correct me if you I'm know? wrong, he, not only that, but uh, at least from where I sat and Bernie sat from our seats, didn't he come off Tony crazy or not? Didn't he come off as very, very likable? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, look, you know, my life is similar to your guys' lives. We've all, you know, made mistakes and stuff. This guy is like a definite positive influence. I like to see him and Joel Osteen <laughs> in the same room on an interview. Uh, thank you, Tony. Let's go take one yeah. more call let's quickly. Go, let's go to Xavier, Sydney, from Floral Park, Queens. Hey, hey, what's up, guys? What's up, Xavier? Hey, that hour, that last hour was just knock down, laugh out loud funny. Between the Space Cowboy Brucey and that barbershop bit. Yes. Yeah. Guys, you I've, like been that. You, I've been with you since the day one. Bernie, I've been with you since I miss Sid. You guys are the best. The best show on the radio, hands down. My Thank man, you. Xavier. Wow. Well, you're That's not going to get an argument here, I'll tell you that. High praise. Yeah, 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 but the stuff on the street is uh, very good. Very good. It's our best feature. We've got one more uh, segment to go. It's a three- it's a three-segment feature, and we've already played two. So we got that to come along with right. Omarosa. Let's go to uh, David. He's in Brooklyn, and he's on line three. Is he there? David, hello. Yeah, I'm here. How are you, Sid? Hi, Dave. How are you? Good, good. A while back when you were switching to the new uh, platform, you were talking about bringing on Chuck Todd. Yep. And I called in, and I was telling you, what are you, what are you thinking? Mm-hmm. And I just I hope you like realize the guy, you keep saying he's fair. He's not a fair fellow. He's like in the tank. A leftist. It just is what it is. He might be a nice guy, but well, we chat. Hey, 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 David, we chat. We ch- we challenge him, though. We realize he's he leans left and he's part of the mainstream media. But we challenge him, and he's game to come on and take our and questions. Way, not only that, no, you challenge him, Dave. I don't care. He's entitled to his opinion. You're not right. He's not wrong. You think you are. Bernie may think he is. He's entitled to his opinion. Let me tell you, half the country, not 20%, not 25%, half the country shares his opinion. And more than half of the folks that live in New York City but, share his opinion. We're not going to cut those folks off because you guys don't like Chuck Todd. That's just stupid. But your, your assertion that half the country shares his opinion, unlike Tim Russert, You're not supposed to know his opinion. The rules have changed. You know it. Tough. (laughs) Live with it. It's half the country. We're not going to cut our audience in half because you don't like Chuck That's why we have have, have us. But that's why you have Fox News, talk radio, and all that stuff to sort of balance out what the, you know, the supposedly, uh, uh, you know, objective mainstream media. So anyway, Chuck Todd's game enough to come on. He takes our tough questions. And uh, that's that. So get used to it. Maria from Nassau County, you're on the Bernie and Sid Show. Good morning to you. Hi. Good morning, guys. Hey there. Hi. Uh, so you guys are having Amorosa on? Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, listen, I, I hope you guys let her know what a backstabbing ingrate she is. Okay? This woman would be nothing, nothing without Donald Trump. And yeah, okay. so yeah what, do you think, of course, what do you think we're going to do, Maria? What do you think we're going to sit well, here and just... Uh, you know, talk talk about the, her dresses she wears. Of course, we're going to ask her tough I questions. Won't. I'm going to be listening, so I, I want you to make me proud. <laughs> oh, please. Well, uh, you're going to have to go to Bernie for that. I'm not going to have this lady come on and start beating her face in because she backstabbed Donald Trump. She did yeah. backstab Donald Trump. I know that. Bernard knows that. Maria, you know that. I think a healthy portion of America knows that. But just like the point I made with Chuck Todd just now, me, this is just me, not Bernie. I don't bring people on this show, we don't, to beat them up to prove 
Donald Trump's point or the right's point. I like when Chuck Todd comes on, says what he has to say, and then afterwards, if me or Bernie or you don't like it, you're entitled to your opinion. Same thing with Omarosa, to bring people on and beat them up in this effort to make them, you know, Donald Trump, we know what she did. We all know that. Now let's give her a chance to talk about it. And if you don't believe her, and I don't, that's fine. As a matter of fact, Sydney, guess who's on the line? There she is. That's there she is. Omarosa. Omarosa's out there. So her book is, uh, you've heard about it, of course. She's been out a couple of weeks now promoting the book Unhinged. And uh, she joins the Bernie and Sid show right now. Good morning to you, Omarosa Manigault Newman. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good How morning. Are you? I'm having a fantastic day. You have a fantastic life. Everything's great for you. Come on, the book is doing great. Everybody's talking about you. You're doing well. So listen, Omarosa, you, uh, the, the news from last night, of course, uh, this, uh, this editorial op-ed in the New York Times, anonymous, a lot of people saying that you named the person in your book. In fact, you're hinting that you named the person in your book. Can you give us any clues? Well, I haven't hidden the fact that I believe that something nefarious is happening in the vice president's office. And so I would say that I could narrow it down to uh, Pence's office. You're saying Pence's office, so uh -huh. not necessarily the vice president, but somebody, maybe a speechwriter, somebody who works with Mike Pence. Yes, because the author, if you read the op-ed, says that he is a Staffer. He's very specific about being a staffer. And by the way it's written, having served as an assistant to the president as well, I believe it's a staffer. I don't believe that it is someone who is like the president or vice president's level. Oh. But because of the choice of words, it is very similar to the speaking style and pattern of someone who would work around the vice president. That's my opinion. And that was my uh, opinion earlier this morning. It is a speechwriter. Yeah, I, I call for uh, for Mike Pence, and so Omarosa. The book again is unhinged. So before we get into some of the stuff in the book, I'd like to ask you this question: What positives did you, Omarosa? I mean, you've known uh, Donald Trump for a long time. What positives did you see in Trump when you decided to support and then work for him all these years before you had some sort of an anti-Trump epiphany? Tell us about that. Well, I, I think that America saw firsthand this relationship between Donald and Trump and I re evolved from 2003 when I first entered the Trump uh, boardroom and Trump Tower all the way until we entered into the White House. I think that I did probably a total of about a thousand interviews saying how much I supported him and believed in him and believed in his vision. But I will tell you that the moment we walked into that office, the moment we walked into the White House, power went straight to Donald Trump's head. And something happened in his brain, and I'm not being dramatic. I'm someone who's known him for a decade and a half. I've seen him in so many different situations, but something transformed in Donald Trump the moment he became the leader of the free world. Okay, and look, you were there every day, so you can make that call. We weren't, I will say this. When I first watched you on Chuck Todd, five minutes in, I'm like, this lady's full of it. She's humiliated. She's, she's angry. She's bitter. He fired her. And the more you talked, the more I started to think, well, there may be some truths in here. But you cannot escape the fact, Omarosa, that you stayed there the whole year, and it wasn't until you were fired, in very humiliating fashion, by the way, that all of a sudden you came out with all this nastiness about Donald Trump. So you, you have to realize that... The timing would lead a Trump supporter or somebody doesn't really trust you to begin with to, to, to say, this Omarosa, she's just a better lady. Yeah, but there's only one little factor you're leaving out. What's that? That the reader gets to decide for themselves because I have tapes. So they don't have to believe me. They don't have to believe Donald Trump, but they should listen to the tapes and make their own decisions. The important thing of why I wrote Unhinged and why I've shared some of these things is that the American people have a right to know what's happening at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. They get a right to know what happens in the cabinet room, what happens in those meetings, what happens in the Oval Office, because the taxpayers pay those salaries and they are making decisions about their lives. And so you can believe Trump. You don't have to believe Trump or me or anyone, but they deserve to know. 
the American people have a right to know the truth. Is that, is that, is that, so and, it, and is that why you made these tapes? Because of contention from a lot of people is, first of all, doing it with Kelly inside the Situation Room is just about illegal, by the way. Just about illegal. Not really, but just about. Um, people can't seem to figure out why you were making tapes all the way through. Are you going to tell me and Bernie you were doing that because you thought the people needed to know? Or was it because you thought the day that did come may come and you wanted to have something to throw back in the White House's face? No, Sid, I mean, you have to admit, I mean, I'm just getting to know you, but you have to admit, unless you heard John Kelly's voice on that tape threatening me with a court-martial, locking me into the situation room, it would be hard for you to believe me if I told you that happened without hearing it for yourself. True. It would be very difficult for you to believe that he said things can get ugly for you, Omarosa. There'll be damage to your reputation, and I would court-martial you if I could. No one would believe that. And so when you ask me why, the why is obvious. As the only black woman in that White House, already the first thing they said when I came out with my book is I had no credibility. Well, the tapes have credibility, and that's important when you're going up against a machine like the Trump world. Now, listen, Omar, the book is unhinged. And, of course, if you heard about it, a lot of stuff in the book uh, unhinged. You might want to read it. Omarosa on the line with Bernie and Sid. But also, uh, Omarosa, the, the president tweeted out that you were a lowlife. He called you a dog. And some people were so upset at you that they were, they were mad at Trump that he insulted dogs and saying that dogs are loyal. He should call you a snake or a rat or something like that. But my question to you is this. It wasn't just substance. You smeared his marriage. You actually said that Trump, quote-unquote, covets his daughter. He wants to have sex with his daughter. Can you understand why people think that and why Trump would think that what you did, after what he did for you, was so despicable? Well, what you just listed, I can't even believe, came from the mouth or that the president, the president of the United States, would say those things. Let's start with that. Well, let's start with the uh, fact that you said he wants to hose his daughter. In the White House. Well, he said it himself. Do you remember on Howard Stern? He said, if she wasn't my daughter, I'd have sex with her. <laughs> Are we ignoring the words that came out of Donald Trump's own mouth? On Wendy he, Williams, she asked him, what do you guys have in common? Ivanka Trump said golf. Donald Trump said sex. These are the things that came out of his Yeah, mouth. but the only thing I would say to that, Omar, the, the, the only thing I would say to that, th- those, those are true. He did say those Donald things. Trump said. Okay. He, he did, said those things. He did those, say he those things. Those but, things out of his mouth. But, but, he, but he did say those things. You're right, he did. And I heard it on Stern, and I couldn't believe it, to be honest. But the truth is, he said those things even before you guys had this relationship, and you still entered this relationship very enthusiastically, very willingly. It didn't seem to bother you when he said those, th- those things before until you got fired. Let's be honest. Well, you're, you're trying to make that correlation, but in Unhinged, I pull back the curtain on everything. Okay. Not just his relationship with his daughter, his wife, his children, but his relationship with the American people. You're trying to make this and reduce it down between just Donald Trump and I having differences. It's bigger than us. It's about the country. It's about the democracy. It's about our freedoms. And those things are being challenged by someone who is not mentally fit to sit in the office. I am not a person who is so driven by ego to think that it's all about me. Because it's not just all about me. I should not have been that, locked in the situation room. The first question that you and uh, that Bernie and said that the two of you should be asking is, why did he take me in that room? What is happening in the White House that's so crazy that you have to take the let, only black woman listen. serving on the staff into the basement of the White House, yeah. lock the door with guards outside, and not allow her to leave? Those are the questions that should be asked. Well, look, they What's will, happening they, in there? They wanted to question you. Omar Osi, you come off as a backstabbing weasel. You really do. I mean, I, I hate to say that to you, but yeah, that's the, that's a fact. you come across as a hater. I'm not a ha- you, you come across as, it, it, you said it's not about me. It sounds like it's all, it's all about you. This guy, this man is, this man is, what he's done for this country is incredible. You are a hater and and you're an ingrate and a rat. On the Bernie and Sid show. She hung up. Oh, well, she had to go anyway. (laughs) So uh, there you have it. The book is unhinged, folks. If you want to go buy it, have fun. (laughs) Have fun. (laughs) 